In this video, we're going to talk about Python data types. Now, data types are the basic building blocks of code that are used to construct larger programs. So I'm going to quickly discuss all of the data types that are available to us within Python, and then we will look at some detailed examples in later movies. So for now, don't get too focused on trying to memorize all of this. Let's just take a quick peek at data types. So the data types that we're going to be discussing are in this table. And here we have the name of the data type on the left-hand column. And then there's the type, which is the shortened internal keyword that Python uses for this name. We see the type as int for integer, uh, float for floating point number, and str for string. Then we have the description column, and that's going to tell us the kinds of values that the particular data type can hold. So let's quickly go through these. Uh, we start off with integers, and these are just basic whole numbers, such as 3, uh, 300, 2019. Then we have floating point numbers, which are decimal numbers, or numbers that contain a fractional value, such as 2.3, 4.6, 100.0. Now notice here, even if you have a 100.0, that it still counts as a floating point number. And that's because of the decimal portion of the value. And after that, we have strings, which are an ordered sequence of characters. Uh, you can think of these as just kind of like words, uh, but you should also know that they can contain numbers as well. Even for example, those um, numbers represented as strings might be a social security number or a phone number. Uh, typically, when we choose to represent numbers as a string, it's because we have no intention of doing any kind of calculation on the values. So for example, it wouldn't make sense to do math on a street address, which is a combination of letters and numbers represented as a string. The main thing that denotes a string is that it has either double quotes or single quotes. And whatever style you use, you must use the matching style of quote at the end of the string. So if you open with a single quote, you need to close the string with a single quote. Here we can see we have hello in double quotes, but the name Sammy in single quotes. The string 2019 is now a string and not an integer because of those quotes around it. Next, we have the Boolean data type, which can only ever hold one of two values, true with a capital T, or false with a capital F. And that sort of syntax is necessary for Python. Uh, Boolean values are frequently the result of logical comparisons and operations that occur in our Python code. Then we come to data structures, and data structures are a little more specialized than basic data types, and that is because they can hold data objects in some sort of sequence or in some sort of mapping. Um, here we have lists, which are an ordered sequence of objects. Uh, the square brackets on the outside denotes to the Python interpreter that this is a list, and the values within the sequence are separated using commas. So in this particular list, we have the number 10, the string hello, and the floating point number 300.3. Dictionaries are another data structure that can store other data types, except in this case, instead of having an ordered sequence, they have unordered key value pairs. Here we can see that we have a key, then a colon, and then a value, and it's denoted by the curly braces instead of square brackets. So for example, we might use a dictionary for some kind of grocery store app, um, where the items in the store are associated with a particular price. So for this example, we have milk, and it's represented as a string, and it's being sold for $1.23, uh, which is a floating point number. After dictionaries, we have tuples. Uh, sometimes they're called tuples, and these are ordered immutable sequences of data objects, meaning that once assigned, the values in the tuple cannot be changed. They look a lot like lists, except they use parentheses. And lastly, we have sets, which are an unordered collection of unique objects. Uh, they function a little bit like a dictionary, but without the key value pair. So those are the basic data types. Again, don't worry if you didn't understand any of it. Uh, we'll be seeing plenty of examples in future videos.